Science Posse Coordinator Megan Schnorenberg joined me earlier to talk about the effort. So Megan, what is the Science Posse? Well, the Science Posse is an NSF National Science Foundation grant-funded program that takes graduate students from STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and puts them in situations where they get to interact with middle and high school students. So our goal is to get those students excited about math and science and engineering and technology, as well as help their teachers develop an interest in STEM education and develop better content knowledge. Well, now you've been doing this for how many years? Four years. Okay, so you've been working in the trenches with the students. What would you say their, um, their interest in science is when you first start working with them? Well, it can be really varied, just like students are, are very different. Some of them are very excited about science. Some of them just see science as something that exists only in the classroom. So it's something they do in class and then they don't think it applies to their everyday life. So part of what we do is try to make science more real to them by having the graduate students talk about their research and what they do in the real world as real scientists. Um, and we just try to get them really excited about it in general. Do you think that students whose parents have been exposed to you know the sciences professionally have an edge? Um, I don't know if they have an edge so much as they definitely have maybe more background knowledge but it's not necessarily an edge in the fact that those other students can learn just as easily and just as quickly as as the students who might have parents interested in it. You're the coordinator right now which means that you you supervise or you help the <laughs> other graduates which are actually now going to the schools. Right. What is it like f I mean Oh, you're helping what, the teachers to then help the students, or how does it work? Yeah, so there's actually two coordinators, myself and Jan Trucho, who's the, the second coordinator. And we kind of are involved in the, in, in some ways we're glorified secretaries. We do all of the paperwork, we make sure that the students have vehicles to travel, that they have rooms, uh, all of that kind of stuff. We buy their supplies, um, and then we also help facilitate their lessons. So the way the Science Posse works, we're an on-demand service. So teachers re request us through our website, and they say, oh, I have a biology classroom, we're learning about adaptations, do you have anyone who could come in and talk about this? And so we go to our weekly meetings, we have weekly meetings with our 10 graduate fellows, and we put this to them and say, who wants to do this? And of course our graduate fellows are amazing and they're like, oh, I want to do it. And so we coordinate to figure out when, that, when our graduate fellow is going to go to that classroom, how many students they're going to see, what supplies they need, how long they're going to be there. Um, and then we also help them develop their lesson if they need any help with that. Our new graduate fellows sometimes um, maybe are used to teaching college classes, but it's a little different to go into a middle or high school class. So we can also help them actually develop the lesson they're going to take into the classroom. Would you say that there's a popular area of interest, a popular, popular type of science that students this age like? Yeah, students this age um, in a lot of ways are very, very interested in kind of hot button topics. Pollution is really big with them and it's something that they tend to be pretty aware of. Uh, so water quality, things like that. Um, anytime you can bring anything cute and fuzzy into the classroom, they love that. Or anything kind of gross and disgusting, they also tend to really like that. Um, so we can kind of appeal to all different types of interests for their age group. It sounds like this is kind of an exchange program in a way, and that, mm -hmm. that not only are the students and the teachers learning from you guys, you guys are learning about people that age. Absolutely. It definitely is. And one of the goals of the program, besides helping students and helping teachers in the state of Wyoming, is actually to help our graduate students, um, to make them able to talk to real people in real ways about what they do. Sometimes, and I'm definitely guilty of this, uh, as a graduate student we get so caught up in our field and the kind of technical speak of our field that we forget how to talk to regular people without using all this jargon that we use every day with our lab mates or other people that we're, that we're working with. And so it's really great to learn how to explain what you do to a seventh grade classroom because they're not going to understand the technical speak. And you know, it can actually really help you with your research in some ways to think about it from a very different perspective and think about how you can explain it in a different perspective. Like, you're a mathematician, right? Yes. And you haven't made me feel uncomfortable at all talking Fantastic. with you. I'm really glad. <laughs> so how did a mathematician get involved in a, 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 the science posse? Yeah, so we're called the science posse, uh, but we do pull graduate students from the sciences, engineering, and mathematics, and technology. We haven't had a technology grad yet. Um, but I actually got involved when the head of my department heard about this group and said, Megan, I think you'd be good for this group. So I applied, and I got in. 
Um, and I spent two years kind of in the trenches, traveling around, meeting students and teachers, and getting to do all kinds of amazing things. Um, and then I transferred into the coordinator role so I can hopefully help the next generation of grad students have as great an experience as I had. You guys help with science fair projects too. Yes. Those are hard. I've, yes. I've helped two of my <laughs> kids through those, and they're, they're not easy. How do you do that? Well, so we do a couple of different things. We have kind of a general presentation that we take in to students that talks about what, what is science fair? And kind of more than that, what is the scientific method and how do we apply it? So we talked about, about hypotheses and making good hypotheses and testing and, and looking at results and all of that, that fun stuff that goes into a science fair project. And then we also mentor students one-on-one. -on -one. So we talk to them about, well, what are you interested in? What might be interesting for you to test? And more importantly, how can you test that safely with what you have? You know, some of our students have wonderful ideas um, that they may not be able to actually carry out given what, what they have, the time requirements they have, um, the equipment that they have. We do sometimes put them in contact with people here at the university so they can work actually in a lab on campus to do some more technical science fair projects um, if that's something that they're interested in or able to do as well. So you guys are kind of like role models. You're the people that are closer to their age than the big grown-ups, but you're, you're, you're like, show, hey, you know, it's cool, and I'm a normal person doing this. Yeah, that's exactly right. We try to show kids that science, math, engineering, it's cool, and we are normal people. That is kind of one of our, one of our goals. You know, when I was um, in elementary school a um, long time ago, there was a huge gap between uh, boys and girls in terms of the encouragement that um, teachers gave to Obviously, they gave a lot more encouragement to boys than they did to girls. Has that leveled out? I honestly don't really see that at all in today's classrooms. We see, you know, girls and boys mixed together. Um, we do try to especially be positive role, mo role models for females in the sciences. And this year in particular, um, just the way that our applications turned out, we do have eight of our ten fellows are females. It hasn't always been that way in the past. It's been either more even or even heavier on the male side. But it is really cool. We have um, engineers, female engineers, female mathematicians, and female biologists in our group, which is pretty awesome to have those role models for students in Wyoming. Megan, we're out of time, but I want to thank you for coming and telling us about the science posse. Yeah, thank you.